By the year 2050, the global population is expected to grow from 7.8 billion to nearly 10 billion people. One of the greatest challenges that farmers face is growing enough food to feed the world while using the same amount of land we have today and facing challenges like unpredictable weather and labor shortages. This is the mission that drives farmers every single day. For generations, farmers have put in the hard work that often goes unnoticed, spending up to 18 hours a day in the field. To get the most out of every seed, they make countless decisions daily without knowing the impact of those decisions for weeks or months. In an industry of variability, farmers deserve every advantage they can get. Combining their intuition and experience with technologies like AI, automation, machine learning, and cloud computing, farmers can make informed decisions that set them up for success. As stewards of the land, farmers are focused on doing more with less and making sure future generations will be able to work the same fields to provide for their communities and so many others. For 185 years, John Deere has provided farmers with the tools they need so farmers can provide for all of us. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jamie Heinlein. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for John Deere. And we are incredibly excited to be here to talk to you about the future of farming and automation. But before we get to the future, I actually want to start with a look into the past. 185 years ago, when John Deere, the company, was founded by John Deere himself. During the US economic difficulties of the 1830s, John Deere, a blacksmith from Vermont, decided to seek opportunity, and he headed west to Illinois. He soon realized that farmers in Illinois were not having nearly as much success as the farmers he had left in Vermont, because the soil was very different. Their cast iron plows had to be scraped off and adjusted every few feet because of the sticky Illinois soil. And this made an already difficult job nearly impossible. But he innovated with a broken steel saw blade and an idea. He reshaped that blade, focusing on the exact curvature of the tool, and what he invented was the first steel plow that you see here on stage with me. And as they say, the rest is history. And as you can imagine, that steel plow was an incredibly helpful tool for farmers. At that time, nearly all the work on the farm was manual and done by hand. So having a plow that a horse could pull through the field saved farmers both time and labor. Since the invention of that steel plow, agriculture has advanced significantly. And in many instances, it's agriculture that's been leading the technology industry forward in dramatic ways. In 1918, Deere launched its first two tractors, the Waterloo Boy and the John Deere tractor. This marked the beginning of the end for the horse in front of this plow. Now, if you fast forward about 100 years later, you'll find some of the most advanced robotic machines are being used on the farm to feed the world. So let's talk a little bit about how we got here because the road to today's technology is actually paved with the technology of the past. You see, advanced technology and innovation has always been on the farm. In 1993, John Deere created a precision farming group, which just as it sounds, focuses on drilling down to the seed level and helping farmers use technology to be more precise in their decisions and the actions that they take in their operations. In 1997, Deere began testing our first self-steering machine, which uses a global satellite-based augmentation system to improve positional accuracy. This culminated with the purchase of Navcom in 1999 to provide our own in-house GPS and correction signal technology. That's technology that we continue to improve upon and develop even today. Using Deere-owned GPS technology and correction signals, we're currently able to guide machines throughout the field within two and a half centimeters, or about one inch of accuracy. 
That precise location sensing technology enables farmers to place seeds, to spread nutrients, and to harvest their crops, all without ever having to touch the steering wheel. I don't know if any of you have driven a tractor, but I can tell you from experience that without this self-driving technology, farming is incredibly exhausting mentally and physically. It's GPS technology that allows farmers to spend their time in the cab of a tractor looking at the real-time data that they're collecting during the job that they're doing to determine if they need to make any adjustments as opposed to steering the tractor where it needs to go. The outcome is simply better decisions made by the farmer enabled by that steering automation. Until recently, agriculture has always been about doing more with more. More horsepower, more inputs, more acres, but the new digital era is changing all of that. The last decade has been about doing more with less and providing farmers with additional tools to make more informed decisions. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are key technologies to building a continually smart, ever-evolving and more efficient farm. And that's why they're key to Deere's vision for the future. Innovations like Sea and Spray, which can differentiate between a plant and a weed and spray only the weed, is taking precision agriculture to whole new levels. So as you can see, innovation has always been core to John Deere's DNA, and it's also core to the agricultural industry. This is one of the many reasons why I love coming to see yes when we get that inevitable question, and we always do, of why is Deere here? I love being able to talk about the innovation that farmers are embracing all around the world. If you visit a farm, you'll see as much technology in the field as you do in Silicon Valley. From robotics and sensors to AI and big data, the farm is a high-tech operation. And all of our technology serves a specific purpose that impacts every single one of us. The world's population is expected to grow from about 8 billion people to 10 billion people by 2050. That increases global food demand by 50%. Farmers must feed this growing world population with less available land and less available labor. They have to work through the variables that are inherent in farming, like changing weather conditions and climate, variations in soil quality, and the presence of weeds and pests, all of which have consequential effects on a farmer's ability to produce food. In addition, farmers have been and are dealing with issues of finding the people to do the work, similar to many other industries today. Depending on the crop they're growing, it can take seven to 15 passes or trips through a field in order to produce a healthy and abundant crop. To get that done efficiently and in a timely manner, many family farmers are relying on hired machine operators. And without fail, finding good, dependable, skilled labor is always at the top of the list of pain points for the farms that I visit throughout the world. With people moving from rural to urban areas, there is an ever-increasing gap between the labor that's needed and the labor that's available. In short, farmers need technology to help them do more with less. Minimizing their inputs, maximizing their outputs, so that we can all put food on the table. And that leads us to today. Are you ready? I know I am. I have been waiting for this moment my entire life. The future of agriculture starts now. But don't just take my word for it. You start out in the spring, you work the soil, and it just smells so fresh. When you till it up, and it's just the greatest smell. When I started farming, there basically was no technology. Every tractor was driven manually, everything was done manually. You'd be planting, you had to follow a line. If the sun was wrong, you would lose the line. Darkness, you couldn't see your marks. Moisture, you couldn't see your mark. Then you'd get squiggly rows. 
My name is Doug Nams. I'm a farmer from Blue Earth, Minnesota. I'm a fourth generation farmer and I raise approximately 2,000 acres of corn and soybeans. I really never thought I would see an autonomous tractor in, in my farming career. For me, it was really exciting the first time I got to take the autonomous tractor to the field, swipe my phone, watch the tractor start with no one in the cab, start doing tillage, come to the end of the field, turn on the and, do the tillage just as well as I can do myself with no one in the cab. I can pull up the app, I can monitor the tractor, see how much of the field it's gotten tilled, I can check the fuel level, I can check the app to see how much of the field is left. If there was something in the field that it wasn't sure about, the tractor will stop and alert me. Is this something I can go around? Do I need to go out and remove an object from the field? The app gives me all this information so I can monitor everything very closely. On farms, labor is always a challenge. We need labor for lots and lots of hours for short periods of time. The auto steer and technology has helped reduce our labor load, which makes my life a lot easier. Autonomy will help because we will be able to put a tractor out in the field and let it run for 24 hours a day because it's not manned. But it also helps us with the weather because we can run so hard when soil conditions are fit. The thing that excites me the most about autonomy is not be locked in the tractor cab all day. It will just allow me to run my business better because I can just pay closer attention to other tasks. Now we'll be doing the jobs that we always wanted to get done but never had time to because we were in the cab all the time. Farmers are fairly traditional, but I have a feeling that once they try it, they will become very accepting of it. I think the tractor can do a better job than I can do. Autonomy, uh, it's, uh, it's gonna be a life changer for me. I've had the opportunity to be in the field with farmers like Doug and this marvel of brains and brawn. And I still get goosebumps every time I see that video and think about how we're going to revolutionize agriculture through autonomy. My name's Deanna Kovar, and I'm responsible for the product strategy for John Deere's production and precision ag business. As someone that grew up on a Wisconsin dairy farm, I'm astonished and humbled to be a part of the progress that agriculture has made over the past two decades through technology. On my family farm, we cared for animals and we cared for the land that grew the crop to feed them. There was always work to do. Many times, there were competing priorities between the different steps it took to both care for the animals and care for the crops. That meant that sometimes, the lowest skilled operator, me, had to do tasks like fall tillage so my dad and uncle could execute the jobs that required more know-how. And I'm certain while the jobs I did back then got done, I'm pretty sure they didn't get done just right. That's why automation and now autonomy are so critical to productivity and sustainability. You see on my family's farm, and every family farm in the world, farming is literally a 24-7 job. There are always competing priorities. And if you don't manage them, they're likely to not get done well or not get done at all. And when that happens, it will impact the farmer's ability to make a profit. 20 years ago, when self-driving first made its way to the farm, it was transformational technology. Suddenly, 
they no longer had to focus their attention on steering the machine through the field. Instead, they were able to pay attention to the million and one other things they needed to think about on their farm every day. Like making sure they were doing a good job at the job they were doing. Or making decisions on the farm. Like how much seed to buy for next season. Or how to react to changing commodity markets. All while the machine steers itself precisely through the field. And here we are, 20 years later. While we have overcome a lot in agriculture through technology, farmers still face many challenges as they navigate from crop season to crop season in a highly dynamic environment, constantly looking for ways to increase their output, lower their costs, and improve sustainability. As Jamie talked about, today's farmers and farm families face three critical challenges the ability to find skilled labor on the farm, getting the work done when it needs to be done, and doing it consistently to maximize crop yield. First, let's talk about finding skilled labor. Today, fewer people are starting careers in agriculture, and the current workforce is aging. More and more, people are moving from rural areas to urban areas. This results in fewer people being available where we need them to grow the food we all eat. Plus, the average farmer is over 55 years old, and they're putting in well over 12 hours a day to plant, nurture, and harvest their crops. This is not sustainable. Second, to grow a healthy, abundant crop, many of the jobs on the farm need to be done in a very specific time window during a season. And given the lack of labor, many years there's simply not enough hours in a day for everything to get done when it needs to get done to get the most out of the land. In fact, when a farmer misses the optimal time window to plant seeds in the spring, it can reduce, reduce that year's total crop by up to 1% every single day. Finally, to get the most out of their land and their inputs, farmers need to drive consistency. But you see, from field to field, or even acre to acre within a field, the soil types, the moisture, the elevation changes. Yet the farmer needs to create a smooth level seedbed in the spring to place to space millions of tiny seeds equally from one another at a consistent depth across 60 feet while driving 10 miles per hour. And that's just one example, and there are hundreds more, where the name of the game is consistency in an inconsistent environment to maximize output. Technology. Technology has been and will continue to be the answer to help farmers navigate through challenges like these. Technology, like fully autonomous tractors that will provide farmers the flexibility to manage these time-sensitive and intricate tasks within their operation at scale. Autonomy isn't a convenience on the farm, it's a necessity to get the jobs done today and into the future. Autonomously, the tractor can handle some of the work that farmers don't have the time or the labor to do, giving them time to focus on the more technical job. And because through sensors and robotics, we have already automated many of the parts of the jobs, we can also ensure that autonomous jobs get done consistently. This means Farmers can focus on all the other tasks on the farm and still make it home at night so they don't miss out on life, from family dinners to football games. So now, let's talk about this autonomous tractor. It is going to open up so many doors for agriculture. Most autonomous vehicles, like cars, are focused on getting passengers from point A to point B safely. In agriculture, a machine needs to be able to achieve so much more 
than moving from one spot to another. When tractors are going through the field, they have to follow a very precise path and do a very specific job. Whether that's preparing the soil for the upcoming season, planting seeds, applying nutrients, or harvesting crops. And of course they have to be safe. I like to think of this autonomous 8R tractor as one giant robot. It goes through the field autonomously, within an inch of accuracy, and it's able to perform its job without human intervention. Just like this steel plow, this John Deere autonomous tractor will be used to prepare the soil for seeds to be planted in the spring. And it's only fitting that this next revolution in agriculture is happening within the same job, tillage, that John Deere the man revolutionized 185 years ago. In the future, John Deere autonomous farming equipment will also execute other jobs that farmers need to do throughout the year. And within every job, the machines will be optimized for a variety of factors, such as the type of the soil, the type of the crop, the size of the field, and more. All these variables make autonomy in agriculture very complex. And I'm excited that we're here making it a reality. When the tractor is running autonomously, farmers can monitor its progress remotely on a phone, tablet, or computer. They could be watching from inside the cab of another John Deere piece of equipment in a nearby field, from their office, or somewhere else entirely with their family. And not only are they tracking where the tractor is, they're also tracking the quality of job that it's doing, and if any adjustments need to be made. Overall, autonomy on the farm has three main benefits. First, timeliness. These machines don't get tired and they don't call in sick. They can run all day and even all night to get the job done when it needs to be done, allowing farmers to get the most out of their equipment and their land. Second, efficiency. This tractor enables the farmer to spend their time on the farm more efficiently because they no longer have to be inside the tractor cab all day. This allows them to focus their attention on the tasks, and there are many of them, that require their attention and expertise to run a successful operation. Finally, autonomy improves the quality of life for farmers. Working from inside a cab up to 18 hours a day is physically and mentally exhausting. There are a lot of weeks when farmers are working from well before sunrise to long after sunset. Now, with this autonomous tractor, we're giving back valuable time to farmers so they can spend it getting other jobs done on time or with their loved ones. Now what's unique about this autonomous tractor isn't just the technology. It's that it's working today and that it's ready for production. This isn't a concept machine, this isn't a demo. This is a working machine that will be available later this year to farmers and it will transform their lives. Now let's take a deeper look at how this groundbreaking machine works.
Hi, I'm Willie Pell. I focus on our autonomous systems. So fundamentally, robots need to be able to be two things. They need to be able to perceive their environment and make good decisions about what they perceive. This tractor has six pairs of stereo cameras, which enable 360 degree obstacle detection. And stereo cameras work just like the human eye. You have two eyes, but only one image. And the brain finds common objects between those two images and calculates the distance of the objects. We do the exact same thing with stereo cameras and machine learning. Then machine learning algorithms running on GPUs interpret the output. So the tractor also always knows where it is and where it has authorization to be. It does this by continuously tracking its global position relative to a geofence. And lastly, the tractor has redundant systems, redundant safety systems to make sure core components are working properly. Now what you're seeing here is exactly what the machine sees. The first column is the raw image. The second is the depth map. And the third is the per pixel classification. And what you can see is that the machine is correctly predicting that the green is ground, the red is trees, and the blue is sky. And you can see this yellow foreign object, and the machine has correctly identified that as well. The fourth column shows the confidence of the classification of each pixel. The more confident it is, the more cyan it is. So putting this all together, you can see that pixel by pixel, this machine is almost perfectly interpreting its surroundings. Now the RGBD, so that's red, green, blue, and depth, that image, the camera's captured, gets passed into the deep neural networks that is trained on hundreds of thousands of images. The neural network classifies each pixel in about 100 milliseconds on NVIDIA GPU processors. Now, depending on whether the obstacle, like a tree branch or an animal, is detected, the machine either continues or it stops. Achieving high degrees of safety and productivity has been the core challenge of this project. And while a farm has fewer variables than an open road, building a production-worthy vision system requires world-class machine learning research team and many hard-fought innovations. This autonomous tractor is always improving through finding relevant data and training new models with it. In addition, for the more than 50 million images we've collected from farms all over the US in the last three years, we're constantly feeding it new information and new images. And the training process rewards it for making correct decisions and penalizes it for making incorrect decisions. But one of the things that makes autonomy and agriculture really challenging is rare or difficult to foresee events for which we have no training data. For example, a billboard falls in a field. The tractor needs to be able to stop. However, for an event that obscure, we're not going to have adequate training data. So to handle these types of situations, we built an anomaly detection system which rec that recognizes nominal scenes of sky, ground, and trees. And when it encounters new objects that don't fit within the standard class of object, the machine just stops. Using this technology, we're able to achieve a very high degree of safety and performance despite situations where the autonomous tractor sees a completely new or random object. And while the sparsity of relevant data is a disadvantage in agricultural autonomy, the ability for the tractor to stop is a huge advantage. When we encounter an anomalous object, we stop. We don't have to worry about getting rear-ended by another driver. And the result is a 40,000 pound machine that is gonna be running safely and fully autonomously in farmers' fields this year. And now I'm gonna hand it off to Julian, who's gonna tell us how farmers are gonna experience it. Julian? Thank you, Willie. So what I wanna share with you is how does a farmer experience a 40,000 pound autonomous machine? First of all, the farmer only needs to transport the tractor to the field and configure it for autonomous operation. They pull out their phone, wipe from left to right, and the machine starts. At that point, with a quick beep, the machine signals all clear, as long as it's all clear, and starts working. And at that point, the farmer is now free to leave it. That part right there, free to leave it, to do its job, requires a tremendous amount of trust. You know, we're basically asking the farmer to hand over a task 
that needs to be done to their high standards of quality. Uh, otherwise, it'll impact their crop and ultimately their livelihood. So all of this tech that Willie shared with us is ultimately intended to earn and to keep that trust. Now, let's say the farmer does have complete trust in the system. They're still going to want to check in on it. And they can always do that through the John Deere Operator Center app and monitor what's happening at any point. They'll have access to live video, images, data, and metrics on how the machine's doing. And they can even adjust things like speed remotely. If there are any job quality anomalies or machine health issues, farmers will be notified remotely, and they can make adjustments to optimize the performance. So anything out of the ordinary that occurs while the tractor is active, the farmer will be notified and will be able to make decisions remotely through the John Deere's operations center. You know, Jamie said earlier, the future of farming starts now. Let's think about that through the lens of a farmer. So imagine you're a farmer. Your whole life farming, you have always actually been tied to the location of the vehicle because you had to be in it, right? And suddenly, you don't have to be in it. This tractor is able to run autonomously 24-7, only requiring a you know, service stop for refueling about every eight to 10 hours. So again, instead of having to sit in the tractor while it does its work, the farmers can monitor its performance and the job through an app on their phone, on a tablet, on a computer. And with all this newfound time, they can focus on value-added tasks for their business and their operation. Or like Deanna said, they can just go spend more time with their family. That's why this is the future of farming. I mean, this tractor is doing something that was once thought to be impossible. I also want to talk to you a little bit about the data that this tractor collects and the benefits of that data to the farmer. So as Willie said, when the, when the autonomous tractor is running through the field, it's using a computer vision model which has been trained on hundreds of thousands of images across hundreds of fields. Right? But what it's also doing is it's collecting data about how well the job is being executed. Right? So all of that performance and field data are continuously being sent to the John Deere Operations Center so the farmers can keep tabs on how the tractor is doing and how well the job is being done. And, and we already talked about that importance of real-time data to give the farmer confidence that everything's going as expected. Right? But the data is not just valuable for real-time monitoring. Right? Data also gets stored in the John Deere Operations Center, and it gives farmers the ability to make strategic planning decisions that can impact how they conduct their operations in the future. I mean, it helps them proactively manage their day in terms of logistics and productivity. Farmers will often, in the off-season, sit down with their trusted advisors and review all of these data so that they can make better decisions for next year. So again, these machines are recording data about every individual seed and plant in the field. Every single pass that this tractor makes matters, not just because it's doing the job, but it's because it's collecting data in every single pass. The more passes the machine makes, the more data it collects, it provides farmers with more information so they can make smart decisions about their operations. I mean, these vehicles are essentially creating a digital footprint of the farm and documenting the decisions they make to grow better crops every year. All of this incredibly exciting and it's not just about autonomy alone. The power of autonomy, which we're introducing today, combined with automation, which farmers have been taking advantage of for years, is what makes this so powerful and transformative. And my colleague, Jorge, is an expert in this area. Jorge. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Jorge Herod, and I lead the autonomy and automation team. We've been talking quite a bit about autonomy, or making vehicles self-driving. But right now, I would also like to talk a little bit about automation and how together with autonomy, they can really help farmers. Unless you spend time in a farm recently, it might be surprising to find just how much technology and how much automation is happening on a farm today. Getting crops to grow to their full potential, you see, 
is a lot more complicated than putting the seeds in the ground and watering them, which is why John Deere, over the last 20 years, has been working very hard to automate most farming steps. Our automation products analyze millions of data points to help farmers make the best decisions. They do that with the best, most accurate data available, the most real-time, recent information available, the most detailed information available, and this allows farmers to get better outcomes. To do this, we've added cameras, we've added advanced sensors, we've added very fast processors, machine learning, GPUs, GPS, all to allow the farmer to do more in less time and more precisely. It's, it's frankly really quite amazing what a farmer can do with one of these machines. And to illustrate this, I would like to give you three different examples. First, let me talk to you a little bit about planting. We've automated the path of the tractor using ultra-precise GPS so we can plant very, very straight rows. So that's why when you drive next to a cornfield, you can see the plants all perfectly lined up. And that's not all. We also automate the placement of every single seed. Every single seed is placed at exactly the same distance, regardless of the speed at which the farmer drives. This allows every single plant to have exactly the space it needs, no more, no less, exactly the space it needs to grow to its full potential. Second, when caring for the crops throughout the year, it's very important for the farmer to apply its product only where it's needed and at the times that it's needed. To help farmers do this, we've added cameras to sprayers. We place these cameras in the booms and they can tell exactly whether each plant is a weed or it's a crop and apply the product as needed and only where it's needed. Doing this, we can save about 80% of the amount the farmer would regularly use. And this is a big deal. It, it not only impacts the bottom line of the farmer, it impacts sustainability and it allows the farmer to do more with less. Lastly, during harvest time, we use cameras to identify changes in conditions of the crops while the farmer is driving. We use cameras inside the, the combine to tell us the crop conditions and adjust the settings in the combine just perfectly so that the, the, the harvester is doing the best job it absolutely can. Using automated technologies in all these areas allows farmers to increase productivity, profitability, and sustainability. And these are just three of the examples of what we've already released uh, to farmers today. And we're working to further accelerate even the, the rate of innovation. We recently acquired Silicon Valley firms, Blue River Technology and Bear Flag Robotics to bring together the best minds in technology and agriculture together to help farmers do more. Because of the journey that John Deere has been in for the last 20 years, it's, it's, it's been uh, bringing all this technology and this automation to the farms, and now with the addition of autonomy, we're really resetting what is possible to be done in a farm. Not only do we drive machines, but we also drive productivity, profitability, sustainability, and quality of life for farmers everywhere. This is why I'm confident in saying that the future of farming starts today. And now, back to Jamie. Thank you, Jorge. Now, we really wanted to have this autonomous ADAR tractor up here on the stage for you in living color today, but unfortunately, it just doesn't fit in the elevator. So instead, we found a little different approach, different way to show you the tractor, because we really want you to understand what it looks like when it's driving through the field. So if you take out your cell phone, you can scan the QR codes that are displayed on the screens. From there, you're gonna be able to access an augmented reality version of this autonomous tractor. You can simply tap your phone screen and place that tractor in any scene that you'd like. If you're watching on the live stream, you can find the QR code at deer.com slash CES. 
Once you scan that QR code, you can follow the directions on your phone. It'll work anywhere, so you can take it outside afterwards and play around with it. I personally think it'll show fantastic on the, on the Las Vegas Strip. Autonomy is no longer just a concept or a demo. It's real, it's ready, and it's helping farmers today. We hope that you're as excited as we are about the combination of autonomy and automation in agriculture. For deer, it's always been about supporting farmers and giving them the tools and the technology that they need to do more with less. Because ultimately, they're the ones that are making sure that all of us have enough food and fuel to live our lives. As you check out the show floor over the next few days, I invite you all to come by our booth. It's located outside in Central Plaza. We'll have that autonomous ADAR tractor there for you. Uh, you can climb on it, uh, get a cool picture, and you can learn about some of the other technology that we're bringing to the farm. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, computer vision, and the sensors that are already deployed on the farm and in use every day. What you saw today is the very beginning of the transformation of agriculture that impacts all of us. And that is why John Deere is at CES. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you at Central Plaza.